Good evening, everyone. This is John Michael playing SimCity. I'm writing and moderating the IGN Strategy Wiki. There are links in the video description for that. And this video will uh, feature how to start a city from scratch in a new region. Um, it won't be the most efficient way to do things necessarily uh, because we're going to avoid all specializations but this will show you how to get started and run a fairly profitable small city so you can expand from there. Um, so your first step before you actually build anything should be to consult your wind map to see what the direction the wind is blowing from. We'll get into the reasons why in a second, but to activate it, simply click the bottom right button in the very corner. That opens your data map views. And select this button here. It's third from the bottom and second from the right and that's your wind map. The blue arrows indicate what direction the wind is blowing from. And it's important because in the new SimCity, pollution from industrial buildings and any, any buildings like that, such as coal power plants, blows in the direction of the wind. So if you have any residential buildings downwind from dirty buildings, they'll suffer even more air pollution than just being in close proximity. So you need to be careful of that. Um, we see here that assuming the highway here runs east-west, uh, the wind is blowing toward the south. This is actually advantageous because the first road you should connect from the highway should run in the same direction as the wind for the same reasons. I'll show you exactly why in a moment. So because the wind is blowing south, we need to build a medium density avenue toward the south. Not too much, maybe about $5,000 worth of an avenue. That's a good starting point. Now what you need to do is build your first few zones. I call them test zones. They're only designed, they won't be very big, um, but they will be designed to give you an overall representation of where your zones will be placed within your city. Now for these first zones, you wanna stick with medium density streets unless you have a specific plan. This way, you aren't spending too much money on the roads, but you also give the buildings a little bit of room to grow. So we select medium density streets, and we're going to build a few. I prefer building three, but depending on how much money you want to spend, you can adjust this at your leisure. And then we line these first three with the residential zones. Next, build one more. You can use the guide for proper spacing, assuming it comes up. Okay. And this fourth section will be filled with commercial zones. Now remember, the wind is blowing this direction, away from where the residential zones are. So what you do is, uh, from the very end, of your um, avenue that you built. Draw one more and keep your industrial zones on this side. So you don't have anything in here. This area that I'm mousing over can be used for later commercial zones or maybe some parks, just anything to keep a buffer between your residential zones and your industrial zones. So we've spent about half of our budget, but we don't really have anything else at the moment other than a few test zones. Obviously, your sims aren't going to like that very much, but you have a little bit of a what I call a honeymoon period um, during the opening part of the city. Um, during the honeymoon period, there will be no fires, and everyone is a little bit more tolerant about the services that they lack. But still, you can't leave it like this for very long. So from uh, you generally want to keep the central area as an avenue because this will be your main uh, thoroughfare between your residents and their jobs. But from one of the ends, select a very low density road, even the low density dirt road. And we're going to zone off a small section. And this area will be called a small utility area. And at the utility area, start giving the utilities. Pretty simple stuff. Um, you want to begin with power, water, and garbage, although, go uh, sorry, uh, power, water, and sewage, although sewage will take you a little bit, and you'll see why here in a moment. Now, we're going to go ahead and, with the dirty industry. We're going to pick the coal power plant, 
And now I am building this a little closer to my residential zones than I usually do, but it will serve the purpose. And it's far enough away and downwind, so it'll be okay. So with your power plant done, you want to lay down then a water tower. Obviously somewhere far away. Um, hmm. Let's extend out the residential one here. Normally I try to keep it closer to the other utilities, but given how polluting they are, a little bit of distance isn't a bad thing. And remember, pipes are laid automatically under all your roads, so you never have to worry about that, just as long as you have the water tower connected to a road and your power plant connected to a road. All your zones that are connected to roads will have power, water, and everything. And the final utility again is the sewage. Oh, I did mix one up. I'm sorry about that, everyone. It's trash that can't be done until you have power and water. That's it. Yeah, you, you uh, need a town hall in the region before you can lay down some trash. And to get a town hall, you need power and water. So now we're going to chill out here for a second. We're kind of low on money. And oftentimes it's pretty difficult to get your very first town running at a profit without having to take out a bond. Don't worry about taking out a bond as long as you're able to invest it within your city. Just whatever you do, don't take out more than one or you'll probably bankrupt yourself a little early on. Um, even if you spend it all, it'll be difficult to pull enough of a profit this early uh, in order to offset the bond payments. It's the town hall. And you can see, we're very close to running in the poorhouse. We're making a loss. Thank you, advisor. We're making a loss of $600, well, 600 simoleons an hour, which isn't very good. But early on, uh, your residential zones are more valuable. I'm sorry, your industrial zones are more valuable than anything else. You can see we've got a high demand for them. So I'm going to take out a bond. And to take that out, you just click your budget bar here click bond A, B, or C, and when you start off, you can only take a $25,000 bond. Good enough. We'll accept. So now we have $26,000, but we're still making a pretty significant loss, uh, but that will change very soon. Simply extend out your avenue. Lay down some more medium density streets. Try to keep them with the guide, although the guide is finicky. Of course, if you have a better design in mind, feel free uh, to do that instead. And fill it all with industrial zones. Now, profits can be a little slow in the early going, so you want to make sure you have a little bit of a treasury buffer. I don't like spending until, or rather, I don't like spending when I have less than 10000 in the bank. Right now, I only have 13000 That's good enough for now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and speed up time a little bit, and we'll check in on the city after a few hours have passed, after we start turning a profit. Okay, so more time has passed. We've expanded our zones a little bit more, and now we're making over $1,300 per hour, which is a very good profit this early on. Um, especially since this is only the second day. So now you should think about uh, starting social services. You basically want to start the social services starting when your population is about 1,200. Uh, the honeymoon period doesn't last much longer than that, um, so you need to make sure that you're ready for it, especially by turning a fairly decent profit. Now, uh, the order of social services is up to you, but there are some general guidelines to follow. It mostly depends on your strategy. For example, if you're going for the coal specialty, the ore specialty, or the oil specialty, uh, you want to make sure you have a fire department first and near those buildings because the last thing you want to do is have a fire destroy your main source of income. So, um, but even as assuming you don't have a specialty, assuming there is no priority for you, the fire department usually should be your first priority because that tends to be the first disaster that befalls your town and you want to be ready for it. So you simply grab a fire station, cost 20000 but it's worth every penny. And you can put it uh, generally anywhere you wish. Uh, most players put it central to their town, so I can put it here. You can even see the fire coverage based on the green lines of the map. 
Or you could also put it closer to the industrial zones, which have a higher chance of catching on fire than other zones. Right now, if I place it in this corner here, I get the best of both worlds. It's near the industrial zones, but it's covering most of the residential. So that's a good spot, and there's plenty of room for it to grow with modules as necessary. Now, um, the only other thing you would do here is you need to start planning for what specialization you do. As I mentioned before, um, the exact uh, way to do any of the specializations is outside the scope of this tutorial video. However, this is the time you need to plan it. Um, by doing that, you can go into the data maps. And assuming you have the, uh, the resources under your town, you can check out the... I always have trouble finding it at first. There it is. The coal map. You can see there's coal there. Or the ore map. We have a little bit of ore. Uh, oil, no oil in this town. You know, we could go with the gambling specialization as well. Anything you wish at this point. Or you may not want to go for a specialization at all. Maybe expand your garbage coverage and make your new city able to take in all of the, uh, all of the problems from other cities and make your money that way. Um, final tip, I actually forgot to do this. You'll want to do this as soon as you build your coal plant. Um, if you have a coal or oil plant, be sure when you click it first, you check this bottom button that says accept global coal deliveries or oil deliveries. Um, by checking that box, your coal plant will automatically buy resources from the global market um, based on uh, its needs when it runs out. Because if you don't do that, then once you're out of coal, your city runs out of power completely and the Sims aren't very happy about it. We all need to ch charge our cell phones after all. So that's about it. Um, that's how to get started on a basic town. And like I said from here, it's all a matter of expanding out slowly, um, adding social services slowly, keeping an eye, an eye on the RCI meter, and developing your income from here. Uh, add government buildings as needed. And... Uh, that's all there is to it. You'll be able to expand your city outward, and soon you'll be able to make a thriving community that turns a solid profit. So that's all for this tutorial video. For more information, check out the IGN wiki. The link is in the uh, video description. And you can check out my channel for more tutorial videos on SimCity. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.